21st century. People still believe in magic. The Earth is flat, UFO steals humans, Russia is a normal state. But even Russian so-called minorities started speaking about separating from the so-called Federation. Some of them are not minorities at all, but their voices are never heard by Moscow. Others don't want to sing together with the wannabe empire. All of them do not want to be associated with the terrorist state. Meanwhile, the economical situation also pushes them to step out of this weird, unnatural community of oppressed people. Another step towards Russian's edge was made by Saudi Arabia, which agreed to increase oil production. This happened after the meeting of US President Joe Biden and the Crown Prince of Riyadh, Mohammed bin Salman. Saudi Arabia has agreed to almost double daily output, up to 13 million barrels. And this is a wake-up call for Putin, who calls Russia the rightful successor of the USSR, as in 1985 the decision to increase oil production made by Saudi Arabia marked the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. Then the growth of the extraction led to the economic and political bankruptcy of the empire. The USSR disintegrated into 15 independent countries. The state, which was one feared by the whole world and each of its citizens ceased to exist. Neither threats nor blackmail nor the rattling weapons helped. None of what the Kremlin is doing now. Today Russia attempts to restore the Soviet Empire based on the idea of Russian cultural superiority and genocidal suppression of peoples. Um, and so decolonization Decolonization of Russia would mean, I think, first of all, uh, with the recognition of the imperial and brutal nature of the Soviet Union and the contemporary Russian ambitions. This spring, the American writer and investigative journalist Casey Michel published an article entitled Decolonize Russia. The author claims that the only way to overcome Russian's imperial complexes is to dissect it into several independent states. The same thing should happen as it happened to the Soviet Union. Today's Russia is a country that contains different ethnic groups within its borders. Russia consists of 21 republics, 9 regions, 46 districts, 1 autonomous district, 2 cities of federal significance and 4 autonomous areas. And every of them is equal as the Kremlin is Convinced. However, even Russian propagandists decided to talk about Casey Michel's theory. For clarity, there is a map where we are cut into 17 pieces. There are large ones, the Republic of Russia, the Komi Republic, the Ural Republic, all separate states. Further, the Republic of Siberia, the Republic of Sakha, the Far Eastern Republic, then the smaller states Buratia, Tuva and Altai. Finally, small enclaves are like shooting holes on the map of Russia. The North Caucasian Federation, Mordovia, Chuvashia, Mariel, Tatarstan, Bashkortostan, Kalmykia and Udmurtia. Although the majority of Russians who listen to these propagandists will unlikely remember even half of the entities of the Russian Federation, but it doesn't matter. And what really does is that each of them remembers the name of their future independent country. The world is already beginning to urge them to do so. For example, the international investigative group Inform Nepal published such an appeal to Kremlin subjects even at the very beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Tatarstan and Bashkortostan. Chechnya and Dagestan, Ingushetia and Cherkessia, Sakha Yakutia and Hakazia, Kalmykia and Buratia, Erzian Mastor and Mariel, Udmurtia and Karvilia. Today you were given a chance for freedom that your parents and grandfathers didn't have, a chance that your children and grandchildren will not have. Raise revolutions to seize power in your republics. Disarm the FSB, the Minister of Internal Affairs and the police. Don't be afraid, Moscow doesn't have a lot of resources they can throw at you. Ukrainians will bear the entire burden of your revolutionary struggle on their shoulders. And if the most distant nations who serve Russia as border guards do not play a major role without Tatarstan, Chechnya, Dagestan, Siberia and Far Eastern Republic, the geographical greatness of the so-called Federation will reduce to a handful of principalities unable to extract or produce something, but populated by bloggers, politicians and propagandists. 
what the so-called Commonwealth is worth can be assessed by observing how the occupiers behave on the territory of Ukraine. For example, the Ukrainian intelligence frequently reported about conflicts between Tuvans and Kadyrov mercenaries or Buryats and Dagestanis. And these are probably only the first clues. After all, when the Kremlin will run out of petrodollars and there will be no money to pay the enforcers, the indigenous people of the territories that once captured by Russia will understand that something somewhere went wrong. And the world will see the collapse of the USSR. Version 2.0